Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and a long, long time ago, there was some posts on r slash overclocking about how VCC PLLOC drastically reduces um, CPU temperatures on like KV Lake, Skylight, Coffee Lake, and literally every platform that has VCC PLLOC, you lower this voltage and your CPU temperatures go down. So today I'd like to address what you should actually do with this voltage because a lot of like, I think some people probably think that this legitimately actually makes your CPU run more efficient. It doesn't. It just skews the uh, temperature readout, but um, this voltage exists because it is necessary for extreme overclockers. Um, so basically on liquid nitrogen, you, you crank this voltage way up depending on what generation of CPU and like there, there's a bunch of variables, but basically you're going to be running a lot of VCC PLLOC if you want the CPU to work all the way down to say minus 190, minus 195 degrees centigrade, which is where liquid nitrogen boils. So if you want to run KB Lake or Sky Lake or Coffee Lake full pot, you're going to be setting the VCC PLLOC um, well beyond what stock normally is. But for normal users, what's interesting about VCC PLLOC is that it massively changes uh, your temperature readings. So I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of that. But first, um, it does also have some impact on stability. For example, this system right now, we have uh, 37, 33 me uh, megahertz memory configured. And basically, it will not post um, if I set the VCC PLLOC too low. Um, so if we just go and save that with one volt VCC PLLOC. Now, it did it before. I don't know if it'll... Oh. This is bloody cheating. <laughs> it, it failed to post last time. I don't know why it worked now. Oh, whatever. If you do set this voltage too low, it can cause post issues. Anyway, let's go Let's go check out our uh, load temperatures in um, in Windows. So... Yeah. So now we have VCC PLLOC at one volt. Um, stupid Windows install. There we go. And I'm just going to run Cinebench. I'm going to use Hardware Info 64. I do have Prime 95 on this system, but I don't really feel like running it right now. So um, we can see, okay, that's vid. Um, really what we want is core voltage, which is somewhere down, well, it doesn't matter. We're not looking at the core voltage here. We're looking at the CPU temperature. So right off the bat, uh, we, we can see something is wrong because this room is not 18 degrees centigrade. It's like 20. I, I wouldn't, it, it's well over 20, okay? There is no way I would be sitting in a room that's under 20 degrees centigrade um, without moaning about it. So right off the bat, these these temperatures are uh, suspiciously low, especially core two is just like way down there. Uh, and now if we run the CPU, you know, if we run Cinebench, um, it'll crash, which is quite possibly a side effect. <laughs> yeah, clock watchdog timeout. Okay, but... Um, Let's see, let's start raising the... Yeah, I can't get the system to reset. Okay, give me a second. Gonna need to do it with the uh, hold for 10 seconds until it shuts down, there we go. So yeah, if you set it too low, it can cause some instability issues, especially if you're running like more uh, a memory overclock. But right off the bat, you can see that it causes havoc with the temperature readings. Um, so now we're gonna crank it up a bit. Um, so we're gonna set it to 1.1 volts, at which point it should be stable um, for Cinebench at least. But it's still gonna, I, I have no idea why it's trying to disk check. Like I've not been abusing this installation very much. Like it's pretty fresh, so I don't know what it's complaining about. Let's just get temperature readings again. Okay, so now we're getting much, much, much more reasonable temperature readings. Let's run Cinebench. And Cinebench this time doesn't immediately fall apart. So that that's nice. So you can see that it does have some impact on your system stability. You set this too low and it's going to start crashing. But much more importantly, it completely messes up your temperature readings. Um...
Though I do have this on like a custom water loop and we aren't running a lot of eCore. We're at like th this vid reading is, th this is what the CPU is asking for, but the VRM is configured to output uh, 1.24 uh, volts with medium LLC. So it's not actually pushing that 1.3 that it's asking for. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we, we get our temperatures and uh, maximum temperature was 61, 62 degrees here. So, nope, we're not saving that. That is trash. Let's just restart and raise the VCCPLLOC again. Incidentally, you like you can actually, well, I don't have the software on this mother, like installed on this mother before this motherboard, but you can change the VCCPLLOC voltage directly from Windows and it'll still show the same effect. So if we set it to 1.2, which incidentally is where you should run it, as close to 1.2 volts as you can, um, because that's where the Intel specification for this is, and we'll go over that um, soon. Windows, stop moaning. There we go. Let's get hardware info. Open again. And Cinebench. Come here. There. And... Yeah, now our temperatures are, you know, even higher. And if we run, you can see we're already hitting like five degrees higher temperatures than before. And now it's six. Because before we were at like 61, 62. Now we're hitting, you know, almost 70 degrees here. So, I, you know what, I don't think there's... Ah, whatever, this isn't that long. We can wait for it to finish. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, picked up some temperature from that. Uh, nope, let's not save the score. Just restart again. And now if we set it even higher, which I don't want to go in that many more steps. So let's just skip one uh, straight to 1.35. So at this point, we're 150 millivolts past what the Intel specification would be. And of course, Windows is going to moan again for no reason. And let's just run... Also, don't bother leaving a comment about how I can get rid of the disk checking thing. I know. I just can't be bothered <laughs> to, like, actually go take care of that. So, yeah. Okay, now idle temperatures haven't really changed. Let's see if what, what we get when we run this. Okay, and now we're hitting, like, even, a couple degrees uh, even higher. But the temperature difference going with... Uh, high VCCPLL, you, you can see how it's not that big a, big a difference. But it does make me suspicious, like if some motherboard manufacturer decided that they were gonna ship boards where the VCCPLLOC is intentionally set lower than it should be, then I think some reviewers would score that motherboard higher. Like, like they'd think that's a better board because the CPU would always run way cooler than on like all the other competitor boards, which is just like, that's uh, not, you know, good in my opinion. Anyway, so now we're getting even slightly higher temperatures again. So you can see the effect of ECCPLLOC here. It changes your red, uh, the, the temperature reading you get. Admittedly, once you go, you know, if you start cranking it up and up and up, the, the impact it has is, it isn't really that massive. It doesn't make as huge a di difference as if you try to set it really low. Because if you set it really, really low, you're going to start getting temperatures that are below ambient and just completely bloody wrong. Whereas, um, you know, going from 1.2 volts to 1.35 volts, that's a 150 millivolt increase. Um, we're not really seeing a massive, like before we were reading what, like 68 degrees and now we're reading 71, 73. So that is a couple of degrees more, but it, it's not a huge problem. Um, to like, you know, you, your temperature reading isn't that wrong compared to what it would be spitting out if you set it too low. Either way, you still should just run it at 1.2 volts. Um, so I'm just going to set it right back down to 1.2. 
which this board defaults it to 1.25 volts, which is why I was, because uh, I thought it like, I already knew roughly that is supposed to be 1.2. And then this board defaults it to 1.25, which uh, at least you can see that it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Really, Gigabyte is kind of harming their own temperature readings here by, by setting it a bit higher, which is like, I guess, because uh, it will read slightly higher temperatures than it should be, but you know, no, nothing ever burnt down because a temperature sensor was uh, triggering safe, uh, safety protections too early, whereas things do burn down if the safety protections don't trigger because the temperature reading is way too low for due to uh, bad configuration. Anyway, let's shut this system down and take a look at the Intel specification for KB Lake, which incidentally for the VCCPLLOC voltage um, is also exactly the same. And the same is true for Coffee Lake. So we're just gonna do this the lazy way, VCCPLL in the search. Um, VCCPLL supply, this one we want, yeah, VCCPLL underscore OC. And here we can see that the VCC uh, PLL OC supply DC current specification. So it's very, very low current and the typical VCC PLL OC voltage should be VDDQ. Um, there is a 5% tolerance on this voltage. So that's not really that huge. And there's some, the, the notes here are about like how to, like note three is about how to measure the tolerances as well as the actual voltage itself. Uh, reliability cannot be assured in conditions above or max min function limits. So the funny thing is there's no min or max here, which is uh, kind of annoying. And unless otherwise noted, all specifications in this table are based on estimates, simulations, or empirical data. These specifications will be updated. Yeah, so nothing super important for us. Let's just add VDDQ into the search. And I think that might be above here. Yeah, okay, so VD memory controller, VDDQ, supply DC voltage and current specification. So on DDR4 platforms, VDDQ should be 1.2 volts. And that's how you know that VCC PLL OC is supposed to be 1.2 volts plus minus 5%. Um, so, uh, which VDDQ, if you're wondering what that voltage is, that's VDIM. Um, or VDDR or VMAM or VDRAM or, you know, just whatever name, like the VDDQ gets a million different names. This, like if you buy an XMP memory kit rated at like 1.35 volts or 1.45 volts, that's the VDD, that, that voltage rating, that's your VDDQ. Now, luckily most motherboards will have the VDDQ split off from the VCC PLL OC voltage. Like there's going to be a separate voltage regulator for that, like, there's going to be a separate voltage regulator for that rail. So you don't have to worry about like buying a XMP memory kit and then your VDDQ going up and then your VCC PLL OC going up and then your temperature is re reading too high because your memory kit now runs the, is running more VCC PLL OC. You shouldn't really have to worry about that. I don't think there are any motherboards that you can buy that are like standalone motherboards that would do this. I think think, um, well, the, the Intel specification for, uh, like, the, the, there is a description for how the VCC PLLOC is supposed to be wired. And if you were buying an OEM motherboard, your VCC PLLOC might actually be tied directly to VDDQ, um, because Intel does allow that in their specification, but any good motherboard should separate those. Because again, if you buy a memory kit, which runs a lot of VDDQ, um, you're going to get a lot more VCC PLLOC and then your like voltage, um, well, your temperature readings are going to be wrong. Um, either way, uh, if you want accurate temperature readings, VCC PLL is supposed to be equal to the typical VDDQ voltage, which is supposed to be 1.2 volts. So that's where it'll read accurately. Evidently, it'll also read pretty accurate. You know, Intel's not concerned about you running uh, DDR3L memory kits because they're, they're still gonna be on like 1.35 volts. And as we saw, it just barely changes the temperature reading. Like it slightly bumps it up. So, you know, it, it's not like a safety concern having too much VDDQ, but what is a safety concern is if you set the VCC PLLOC too low because your CPU's internal real physical actual temperature in reality would be way higher than what the temperature sensors are measuring. 
and they, then you could, you know, like that, that can cause some serious issues because your CPU would be hitting, say, 105 degrees under, under load or 110 degrees under load. And your temperature sensors would be reporting that you're still at uh, 90 or something. Um, so the throttling would kick in, but your vol like your te your CPU temperature is way beyond safe tolerances. So basically, run your VCC PLLOC at 1.2 volts because that's what Intel spec that rail to normally be at. You can run it above that; that's also fine. Don't run it below that because if you run it below that, the temperature reading starts being like reading too low. The, the t measuring the temperature as too low is just bad. Okay, <laughs> because the whole point of having temperature readings is to prevent. Uh, thermal damage from too high temperature, right? So accidentally reading the temperature is too high, not as bad as reading it as too low. So yeah, and I also went and cross-referenced this, this against a engineer at a motherboard manufacturer and he confirmed, like he, he agreed with basically what I've just said here. Run your VCC PLLOC at 1.2 volts for accurate temperature readings. Don't run it below that, that's bad. You can run it above that, but there's really like it'll give you some safety margin, I guess, you know. Um, but honestly, you shouldn't need to change that voltage at all. At 1.2 volts, it'll clock memory just fine. Um, and it'll, it'll read temperatures fine as well. So, yeah, they're really not, like, just don't set it lower than that. So, yeah, that's it for the video. This was, oh, it wasn't surprisingly short. I thought this would be a lot shorter, but it isn't. Okay, so that's it for the video. Uh, hopefully, oops just knocked the microphone over. Um, it, it didn't quite manage to fall. Um, but yeah, that is what you're supposed to set your VCC PLLOC to if you want your temperature readings to be accurate. Um, because yeah, and also you saw how it does have some impact on stability. But basically, um, 1.2 is the best voltage to run that at and just don't mess with it. If you're on liquid nitrogen, then you're be, you're going to be cranking that voltage way, way up because liquid nitrogen requires it. But for everybody else, if you're on air cooling or water cooling, just leave it at 1.2 because uh, otherwise, like if you set it too low, your temperature readings just end up being wrong. If you set it too high, well, it doesn't really harm you, but there's no good reason to do it. And I guess you could cause some degradation. So according to this data sheet, like you really shouldn't exceed 1.26 volts for the uh, VCC PLL because, well, VDDQ is okay up to 1. Point, well, plus 5%. Though admittedly, VDDQ can also be 1.35, so which plus 5% would be like 1.4. So that would still technically be within tolerance up to 1.4, but again, your temperature readings are going to be unnecessarily high. Um, so, yeah, like... There, there's nothing wrong setting it too high. There's definitely issues setting it too low. 1.2 and up is fine. Um, though I'm going to run it at 1.2 for all my testing because I actually want the, like, if you set it too high, your your temperature readings just go out, get really, like, uh, well, they do get kind of high. So, yeah, um, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, including a, uh, like, you know, I want to go to Computex this year. So if you'd like to help out with uh, getting me to Computex, um, we still need, like, uh, how much is it? Last I checked, I th think the, the I, I still need, like, $1,000 before I can, like, pay for the entire trip. So, yeah, if you'd like to help out with that, there is a link down in the description to the PayPal, Patreon, as well as shirts. Um, any of those will, will help out a ton. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.